if you are ready to enter your glow up era get into your summer body by august you should watch this video from the beginning to the very end what's up on video gang is divine and welcome to divine's journal and in today's video i'll be telling you guys 23 tips to glow up physically and mentally so make sure you save this video to watch it later if you can't complete watching the video like the video physically and share with your friend so the first thing we're going to be talking about is your body posture your body language says a lot about how beautiful or pretty or attractive you are I know the title of this video is about being attractive and becoming pretty but much more beyond being pretty and attractive your body language says a lot about how confident you are and that is the main purpose of this video to build your confidence so how you sleep how you walk how you sit even as simple as how you eat says a lot about how you perceive yourself to be attractive or pretty yeah it's crazy Let's go! So the first glow up habit we'll be working on is our sitting posture. Now, before I made this video, I did a lot of research. Like, I'm telling you, I read articles, I watched tons of videos. And it's a lot because there's a lot of toxic information and good information. But yeah, I'm giving you the good ones because this is my journal. I want to work on myself. Sitting down, your sitting posture is determined by where you are sitting on. You are sitting on something that has a platform where you could rest your back. Or you are sitting on something that doesn't have a platform that you can rest your back like this chair or a stool let's start with the chair i watched a video an etiquette school video and in this etiquette school the woman taught them how to sit down and for the guys when it comes to sitting down you have to sit with your chest up your chest and your shoulders before i watched that video i've been studying myself a lot and i realized that because I am petite in stature, I'm small in stature. When I sit crouched like this, when my back is crouched, it makes my stomach, all, like my organs in this area, like sink inside and makes my neck like hot. I begin to have neck pain. You start having neck pain because of your spine and your organs are, are like uncomfortable. So what you want to do is to sit with your chest up. A quick backstory, right from when I was in primary four, that's grade four in primary school, but I always used to start with my chest up. When I got to secondary school, JS1 or grade seven, seniors used to bully me to, to like bring my chest down that I'm carrying my chest up. You can imagine them saying it's in Yoruba. It was very, very annoying. I used to feel so insecure that anytime I'm walking, I used to be so conscious that when my chest is up, let me bring my chest down. But now that I'm doing my research, I was like, why did I even change for those seniors? Like, I could have left my chest up because standing erect keeps you in good posture, especially the older you get. Like I said, it makes all those organs comfortable, like from your neck to, to your back, to your hip area. First step to sit well, according to my research, is to bring your chest up, then your shoulders. Whether you're a guy or a girl, walk with your chest up, then your shoulders. When you walk with your chest up, try to rest your shoulders. Your chest is up, but your shoulders are rested. I want you to practice it. As you are watching this video, don't just watch the video, but actually practice it. So your chest up, your shoulders are rested. If you are sitting down on a stool, you don't have anything to rest your back. But with your chest up and your shoulders rested, you will feel more comfortable than sitting down like this. Yeah. It might be painful at first because of your body is not used to it but with time to so actually get better because i've been practicing like to get better i'm going to share a tip at the end of this video that is going to like help you guys with like all the tips in this video because i know this video is going to be a long one but it's going to be a very impactful one for you the next thing you want to do is to cross your legs now for guys according to her her legs are meant to be like up crossed like this or for ladies you are meant to sit like as if you are angling to the side. If you are raising up your leg, your leg is meant to be touching downwards. Your toe is meant to be facing downwards for ladies. But for guys, you can cross your leg like this. Or you could just sit with your chest up, your shoulders rested, your chin up like that for guys. Or for girls, if you are a lady and you have a face to wall, you could use it to cover your laps so your underwears are not showing. Then also if you don't want to raise up your leg for ladies you can put your legs down but just use just use either of your legs place it like as if you are facing the corner or prefer it be my right leg over 
your ankle so like ankle of your right leg should touch the left side of the ankle of your left leg remember your chest up and your shoulders rested with time you begin to feel more attractive and more confident sitting like this and i've realized most of the women that practice this sitting posture are high class and high valued women in society it's just a confidence booster when you're sitting with your chest up your stomach is not sucking in you just it, it just feels more comfortable after practicing how is it sitting with your chest up now the way you walk also determines how attractive and how confident you will feel have you ever noticed that celebrities or influential people when they walk into the room they walk like as if they own it they walk like they are the star of the show now there are three things that I, I studied to build a good walking posture the first thing is eye contact people will say if you are walking don't look down it means that you are timid i don't believe so why can't i look down i have to look at where i'm going to but the tip i have for you is that walk like as if you are a model if you've ever watched a runway show you will see that models walk and look straight into the air like they look straight like look straight into the air like look straight like as we are thinking even if you come across a stranger that you don't want to talk to you are looking straight into the air and not looking at the stranger also when you feel like you need to blink so it doesn't look awkward you can look down then look back straight straight into the air that was easy you boost your confidence not your ego confidence not ego you need to greet the person you can obviously greet the person with a smile and continue looking straight second thing is that models strut just like a parade I remember when I was in secondary school, I used to be like commander for my parade. When you are walking in a parade, you walk with your left and right, left and right. But for models, when they walk, they start with their right. Preferably, they start with their right ankle in front of them. The toe of their left leg is going to be behind their right leg. When they are walking, they are walking in a straight line. Not totally straight, but something like a straight line. So imagine yourself walking on a straight line. And when you're walking on that straight line, I want you to strut your hips. Now for guys, you want to stand, remember, standing chest up or walking in that straight line. So for girls, you want to strut your hips. This will make more sense when you're walk walking and wearing heels. If you're not wearing heels, you might not necessarily need to strut your hips. Strutting your hips to the side eases out the tension from looking forward and standing chest up. When you strut your hips to the side, the next thing you want to do is to know what you are doing with your hands. A lot of times when models are catwalking, either they are holding bags or their hands are in their pockets or they are strutting their hands from the left to the right. They are not strutting their hands forward to the back. They are strutting from the left to the right. That's what you should try doing. Do something with your hands when you are walking. If you don't want to hold your bag, you are holding your purse. If you don't want to hold your purse, your hands are going to be in your pocket. If your hands are not in your pocket, you can try strutting your hands from the left side of your hip to the right side of your hip. Or better still, if you want to, you can play with your clothes. Just make sure that you are using your hands to do something when you are walking and you are standing straight or walking on a straight line. And your eye contact is core. Now, for your sleeping posture, when I was researching for this video, a lot of sites and videos suggested that you sleep on your back so that you are balanced out with your neck and your spine but i know it's not easy for people to sleep on your back so if you can't sleep on your back you can sleep on your side preferably your right side so you sleep something like this so your hands are here not you lying down on your hands you want your spine to be balanced so a lot of times people recommend putting a pillow in the middle of your legs which i don't think a regular person or a regular dude who just wants to sleep would think of putting a pillow in between their legs i would just recommend you sleeping on your back and lately that's what i've been doing i'm not a fan of sleeping with pillows but if you sleep with your pillows make sure that your pillow is not so high basically this is how you should sleep Another thing I want to recommend to you is that when you are sleeping, practice nose breathing. Because me growing up, I've always been a serial mouth breather, and I was even bullied for this in primary school life. And so that's a, that's for the part two of this video. I'll talk about that. But anyway, when you want to sleep, practice breathing from your nose, not your mouth. Trying your best as much as you can to breathe through your 
nose on your mouth before you sleep you can also practice vacuum training so with your stomach breathing in breathing out the capacity with your mouth shut practice vacuum training and nose breathing and i want to say that this is very important because if i've had friends that would mistakenly doze off beside me during daytime and they are snoring <coughs> so it's very important to practice vacuum training so you don't catch yourself snoring even if you are not a mouth breather not a bad thing to snore but it doesn't look attractive i already talked about walking and standing is also important now the way you stand stand like you have authority or you can take more space of where you are and you are free it's very good to stand like that it makes you feel like the main character but when you want to stand you want to make sure that you are standing like as if you are a tower and put it in stature but either ways what you want to focus on is your neck position your spine and your legs basically your legs because you are standing preferably if you want to stand make sure if you can you can stand in a v position because it makes you stand in a balanced position where you will not fall down easily are falling down a lot but standing in a v position keeps you in a more stabilized and balanced position and if you can and that thing to stand with your leg wide so you are balanced don't stand with your two legs too close up together because you won't be balanced tension is not spread so stand in a v shape or wide legs and remember your chest up and your shoulders relaxed another tip that i've learned from like modeling research to to keep your chin down so of course you are standing with your chest up and your shoulders relaxed but you want to keep your chin down because it gives a more balanced position i'm short so i have to look up a lot of times but having your face your chin down is going to give you a more balanced posture okay how you eat is also a very very important posture when i was watching that etiquette school video the teacher she had to keep sheets in between their armpits so that when they are balanced on the dining table they don't raise up their arms from their armpits and it's just their hands that need to be on the table not their elbow just their hands that's serious etiquette for me what i just believe is good posture when you're eating try to have your mouth closed honestly i for one i'm not somebody that eats with my mouth closed all the time but for my research, having your mouth closed when you are eating is good etiquette and is a very, very good posture. So you should try eating a lot with your mouth closed when food gets into your mouth. Another tip I have for you, whether you are eating swallow, you are eating rice or you are having a snack, whatever you are eating, make sure you eat from the right side to the left side. Let's say you open a bar of chocolate, open your bar of chocolate from the right side. So you eat it from the right side to the left side same thing goes for if you're eating ice cream or if you're having swallow eba eat from your right side to your left side you don't want to get your rice and start eating from the top of the rice you want to eat from the side from the right side to the left side even if it's swallow eba you don't want to put your hand on top of the swallow on top of the amala you want to eat from the right side to the left side that just shows how neat you are and being neat is very attractive so we've talked about how to balance your posture which is very important out of all these different postures which one do you suck at let me know in the comment section is it your sleeping posture is it your walking posture is it your sitting posture which one do you suck at and if you have extra tips for us regarding any of the postures tell us in the comment section i'll be so happy to learn more as we're entering this glow up era next part to your glow up habit has to do with your skin and your body your appearance so we've done your posture now we're talking about your appearance in your body first thing is your teeth your teeth growing up the most insecure part about my body has always been my teeth and that's why i kept it first because it's very very important when it comes to growing up and confidence i was an introvert when i was in primary school so I didn't really talk so much. When I was younger, I grew up like the ugly duckling among my siblings. I always felt like the ugly one. Especially in photos. I hated taking photos. My teeth were so, so, so unaligned. And when I was in grade 8, just so, my teeth said, like, instead of the new teeth coming from behind to push the old teeth out, the new teeth was growing from in front of the old teeth. Like, it was, it's 
I was so insecure about my teeth. Like, this was very spacious. It was annoying. It was very annoying. My mom will always emphasize on it. And, like, I was just so insecure. However your teeth looks like, you have to get over it. The first tip I have for you is to start smiling more. Because I hated taking photos because I hated smiling. In short, most of the photos my dad would take of us, I would literally be like this. If I'm not like this, I will literally be pouting. Because I hated showing my teeth. But be proud to show your teeth. However your teeth looks like. Smile. Shows how confident you are. Smile. Yeah. Learn it. Some people don't even know how to smile. Learn it. You might not always smile with your teeth. You can smile without using your teeth. But the reason why I hate smiling without using my teeth is because when I'm smiling without using my teeth, it makes me look insecure. Like I, I'm forced to smile. Compared to... You see the difference. Start practicing breathing and teeth alignment. Your wisdom era. I, I forgot to even mention that I had to open my gum so that my wisdom to come out well. I had a mini surgery, like 2022. The first time I went, I went to the dentist. The dentist told me that my teeth wasn't clean, and I'm like, that has been my motivation to brush my teeth very well. Like, so that the next time I ever I have to go to the dentist, no dentist is gonna tell me that my teeth is dirty. So. If you want to brush, the right way to brush is you're not brushing your gum. You're brushing in your mouth. You're brushing in the upward down motion, upward down motion. Here, by the side, up, by the side, by the side. Then you're scraping your tongue. If you have money to afford Invisalign, braces, all those things, seats and correctors, if you have money to, you can. But me, this video is focusing on things you can do without even spending money and working on yourself that will better yourself even for future purposes. Wow. Advice that you should try balancing your teeth. So try balancing your teeth on top of each other. So your wisdom, your pre your molars and your premolars are balanced on each other when your mouth is closed. Like this, something like this. So some people will call it mewing, that's up to you, but it's just to help with mouth breathing. I used to be a serial mouth breather, like I said, so this has helped me to reduce mouth breathing and focus on nose breathing. But this is one tip I will definitely tell my daughter or my child if they ever have to struggle with mouth breathing because nobody told me this. They are just always, close your mouth, close your mouth, close your mouth. Like you don't know that I'm struggling with breathing from my nose. You think it's that easy. So yeah. That's a big tip. So my favorite feature in my face are my eyes. I love my eyes because they are one feature that I've always had since when I was young. So my eyes is like cat-eyed per se. It could appear big and it could appear very tiny. As share when I'm smiling, it could appear very tiny and spread like a cat. I really love my eyes. What you want to focus on is making your eyes very obvious. Even if your eyes aren't, to focus on this area, your eyebrow, your eyelash, and your eyes themselves. If you wear contacts, up to you. If you don't wear contacts, cool. If you wear glasses, cool. If you don't, cool. What you should focus on is this area. So you see that most ladies, they will book eyelash appointments because your eyelashes can literally take your eyes from this to this and make give it a lot of volume if you have a mascara too you could also make sure that you are using your mascara on your under eye it literally makes your eyes more obvious and stand out so that's what your goal should be to make your eyes stand out now for me i really like this um wing eyeliner thing you can also use your eyeshadow to do it so like to your under eye and from your top eye i like it because it like makes my eyes even more cut I'll try to get a mascara soon, but not now. All the things you don't have money to buy, just write them down. When you have money to get them, it will be in your wish list. And if you don't need to get them, you will know whether you don't need to get them. I really don't need a mascara now, honestly, because I scratch my eyes a lot. But this eyeliner, like, it works wonders. Like, it just makes me feel cool. If you use Pinterest a lot, you'll notice that it's not a new trend and that people are making their lips very obvious, even more obvious than their eyes. I will always prepare my eyes over my lips. But the body is one. <laughs> so some people have full lips. I, ha I basically have full lips here especially. Some people have pink or red lips. I don't have full pink or red lips. My lips ha are pink here. 
and underneath here is sink but the top area is dark or black some people have naturally lined lips some people don't i have naturally lined dark lips around my lips so i also use like a lip liner or eye pencil like also make it obvious know what type of lips you have and know how you can naturally make it obvious and blossom a huge tip i have for you is to use lip gloss like it is meant to be your number one bag essential whether it's cold or hot a lip gloss will never go wrong your lip gloss can actually elevate your face especially if you are not wearing full makeup this can elevate your face from looking bare to looking like you know what you are doing and you look good and you feel confident you don't want your lips looking chapped you want your lips to look good it's a lot when your lips are moisturized another tip i have for you is to moisturize your lip with a lip balm or vaseline before putting your lip gloss i can literally, I literally slept like this i've not kept any i literally slept for yeah i slept from two to like nine and this lip gloss has been on my lip like this i'm not even joking it has been on my lip like i've not added lip gloss to my lip if you moisturize your lip before adding lip gloss you're going to help the lip gloss last longer and you're going to avoid your lips being chapped also another creepy tip is <laughs> if you're practicing nose breathing when you want to take breaks from like closing your mouth you because when we close our mouth there's a way our mouth starts to smell have gum you can chew gum or if you can take ment mentos so your mouth is not smelling but when you want to take a break from closing your mouth you can bite on your lower lip like that's what i literally do once in a while not every time you are biting on that area to like make it red and that weird thing that people do some people do is that they use pepper pepper lipstick like some people usually put pepper inside their lip gloss so that their lips will be red and to be hot i'm not i'm not i'm not psycho i'm not so psycho like that bite on your lip once in a while then apply your lip balm or your tints and your lip gloss if you want to remove your lip gloss a big tip i have for you is to get your face or your face towel put a little oil on your lip when you put the oil before you use anything like face wipe put oil on your lip when you put oil on your lip use just like when you take up your makeup and cleanse your face with oil use the oil to cleanse your lip gloss it will help you to remove it without being all sticky and dirty like this is very effective like and your lips are going to appear softer the thing i've noticed about people that are confident are very pretty people is that they know they are pretty you don't need to tell them they know they are pretty even for those that look average but everybody feels like this person is so pretty because of they know they are pretty the 10 out of 10 you don't need to tell them nothing less so i want you to feel like that and when it comes to your skin your skin is all over your body the first thing you have to understand is what your skin is what your skin type is whether your skin is oily or your skin is dry then you also have to understand what is your complexion my complexion is dark like caramel so you know how to treat your skin you don't want to be using what a light person will use on their skin when you are dark skinned i don't want to be using what a dark person use on their skin when you are light skinned the goal is to make your skin glow not to bleach your skin or to change your skin colors to glow up glow up remember start practicing basic skincare you need a cleanser my skin soap which i use for my body and my face my skin soap is like an exfoliator not harsh so this should be it exfoliates my face and cleanses my face so it's not harsh i use it every day another thing i do is that my body towel is different from my face towel and i don't use the same face towel every day i use a new face towel every day my face towels are most of the time white so i can see the depth when i'm cleansing my face with my face towel if i'm having breakouts like i'm on my period now if i'm having breakouts i could still use my rose water with my face towel to cleanse anywhere I have breakouts you need a good cleanser my cleanser is my soap my bathing soap you need a good moisturizer or sunscreen you can get a sunscreen that can serve as a moisturizer you also need a good oil if you are battling with black spots which i had at one time make sure you get vitamin c serum that is not going to bleach you but brighten out your skin brighten out those dark spots within like three to six months apart from your vitamin c oil you can just use your regular baby oil now people actually say that baby oil makes them look black i am naturally black so i love baby oil because my skin is black obviously and it makes my skin soft that's why i use baby oil but if you can try to get a good oil serum people have recommendations i just use the basic things like i also use my baby oil for my skin drink a lot of water sure when you say that you are breaking out because you want to flush out toxins very important people take this with levity but it is the most important skincare tip you can ever come across make sure that 
you are shaving every area that can sweat every sweaty area down there or under your armpit this tip is very important when i say exfoliating after shaving it helps my hyperpigmentation hyperpigmentation is a bad thing please don't feel inferior or insecure about your hyperpigmentation then to embrace it embrace your skin my younger sister she started having stretch marks when she was eight years old she took her stretch marks like you know the way lions and tigers have like prints on their body that's how she took like she was so confident like as if she wanted more stretch marks she was so happy and she's still happy to this day so be confident in your own skin don't feel inferior in your skin remember your body is the temple of the holy spirit i'm not a makeup person and if you guys have been following me like for my first channel you'll notice that i already make wear makeup i'm trying to learn it my mom is a makeup person honestly to wear makeup i give you guys is effort because to wear something for a particular time then clean it out then the time you spend to get it on it's just a lot makeup is very messy to me from how you put it to how you take it out if you're not a makeup person or if you're a makeup person before your glow 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 glam makeup you need to have a everyday go out makeup what i know you should focus on your eyes your mouth and your hair i'll talk about hair separately but focus on your eyes your mouth your face generally those are the three things you should focus on if you are going out to look put together so i've already talked about your eyeliner your eyebrow your eyelashes when you've done that you just you've elevated your look from zero to a hundred <laughs> and your lips once your lips are plump looking glossed you are good your lips are lined you are good your face you've done your skincare you've done you use your moisturizer use your sunscreen your face is already glowing good then if you want to go further you can apply blush you can apply blush on your cheeks so that it's pumped up i don't have blush here and you don't have blush you can use your lipstick if you have a red tint lipstick just put like three drops three pumps just three pumps and you have elevated your looks then if you have eyeshadow you can use your eyeshadow preferably in a like low toned it depends on your skin or your bronzer so that's simple as that on top of your lips and your nose contour and that's all that's all that's simple everyday makeup you can try every day let's talk about your hair if your face is looking snatched your eyes are looking snatched everything your lips are looking good your teeth is shining well your teeth is looking good and your hair is not looking good it's going to like bring down all your efforts to the mud please Try to have an everyday hairstyle and know the hairstyle that works for you, that fits your face. Because it can either bring out your face or it can either bring down your face. Yeah, honestly. So, yeah, I hate hair touching my face. I actually hate it. But I realized that having, like, my hair to the side like this actually makes me appear pretty. So, I'll, I'll go with it. Even though I hate hair touching my face. That's how I write with it. So the most popular hairstyle to make your hair look good, according to people, is slick buns. I'm not a big fan of slick buns, but when my hair is down completely, I do a lot of slick buns. So yeah, you can check my second channel. I talk about hair. One tip I, I've been emphasizing on since the beginning of this year is to learn to style your edges. You don't have to style your edges with edge control. It could just be as simple as brushing your edges forward. Yeah, so that your edges are not going go, 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 go in front of you. Like, And if you if you are a guy and you are watching this video, please brush your beards. Do you know that your beard can also determine how you look and can actually help bring out your face? If you don't have a good jawline, you can use your beards to like help you. But if your beards are like tata 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 tata, sister hates boys that keep tattered beards. Your boy, your beards are tattered. Please shave everything. Is that you shave everything? You keep your mustache. Or try to groom your beards to grow grow your beards. I have a lot of hair growth tips on my second channel. If you want to shave your beards, make sure you are shaving from here here where your neck where your jawline ends not from here so that when you're raising up your neck it doesn't look awkward also for your hair for styling your hair try wearing hats scarves bandanas turbans different options apart from wigs you can try all those other things accessories to your hair like i'm using a clamp today on my hair you can use hair beads you can use hair clips try accessorizing your hair it also makes your hair look put together even when it is not i wonder thing you should take note of are your nails now your nails could be a confidence booster i'm saying my sister my younger sister really took her, her nails seriously like doing her nails like me how i'm going with my own glow up is just using my natural nails so these are my nails yeah 
so i intend to get clear curtails know what color fits your skin your skin tone and work with that i use cutlery to eat swallow a lot so i'm really using my hand to eat but i wash my clothes i do my laundry with my hands and i don't like when nails are chapped you know when you fix your nails if one of your nails removes whether it's acrylic or press on it doesn't look put together so i rather have all my nails i'm going to even cut my nails like same level close to my finger and in clear curtails and looking neat that's the goal so make sure that your nails look neat whether you're using acrylic nails or you're using press on nails like press on nails will even do you like better than acrylic nails because you can always change them but if you have acrylic nails and one of your acrylic nails is like removed you have to wait till you get an appointment except you know how to do nails your toenails are very important so because you don't want your your feet to be smelling so cut your toenails people take this tip with levity but it's important cut your toenails especially boys foul your nails foul your fingernails cut your toenails tell me what is your favorite body feature i love my eyes so much let me let me know what your favorite body feature is let me know i want to know because my last video i told you guys comment your body language people were not even focusing on what i said you should comment on they were focusing on the stories <laughs> tell me tell me what was your favorite body feature in the comment section i really want to know if you don't have a favorite body feature that's cool that's all right just let me know so now we're going to be talking about smell notice we're progressing we started with posture then your body now how you smell as human beings we naturally have different body scents like you know when somebody passes you know this is where this person smells but apart from your body scent you can also enhance your body scent with an artificial body scent or body mist so for me my favorite fragrance is vanilla because of i react to too much scent i've, I've said this a lot on my second channel I react to too much scent and if you know me personally i don't use so much perfume because of i could get a sore throat because of too much scent what i preferably use is a body mist or deodorant and i always prefer a body mist than deodorant vanilla is the softest fragrance i know and it is so nice like make sure that your laundry soap or washing soap has a good fragrance because your clothes will also impact on your smell you can even add fragrance to the rinsing water of your clothes. Get a good lotion or a good body oil. There was one little packet fragrance that my uncle gave me. I use that packet fragrance for my hands when my hands are like not moisturized if I go out. It's a very, very scented lotion. So even if I don't wear perfume or body mist that day, like I could be smelling that lotion. Apart from looking good, smelling good also makes you attractive. You know where the clean girl I said came from? Because being clean makes you attractive. It gives that clean vibe. Even when you are not there, just because of your past, you left your presence. You get. Now, I want to add that if you have body odor, instead of having showers, make sure you are having more baths. You know, a bathtub is different from a shower. In the bath, you want to add essential oils that have these different fragrances so that your body smell can acclimatize with the natural scent try that and let me know how it works for you hair odor honestly my hair smells when i'm sweating people ask me this question on my second channel how many times do i wash my hair i would recommend washing your hair one to eight weeks depends on how your scalp is dirty if your scalp is dirty wash your scalp also make sure that the products the hair products you're using have good fragrances most of the pro hair products i use regarding my shampoo and my conditioner particularly your conditioner because the smell of your conditioner is going to last longer on your hair make sure all your conditioners whether deep conditioner shampoo conditioner or leave-in conditioner have good smells because they are the products with the smell that are going to last on your hair take that into consideration when you're getting those products so you see I've, my schedule lately has been so so imbalanced like I don't even understand how I sleep because of, I'm working on two channels. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. In short, I even had to drop the editing gig that I'm trying to work on. It's just focus on these two channels. I'm not even on Instagram and TikTok so I can focus. Because Instagram and TikTok is more distracting. I, I really want to be less distracted. Still, I'm still even distracted. But anyway, I digress. For you, Regarding your mouth, I already told you how to brush your teeth. But apart from brushing your teeth, doctors will always recommend that I should brush twice a day. I hope that was not like TMI, but I just wanted to get the content. My teeth are clean and I don't brush my teeth twice a day. 
but i'll recommend you brush your teeth twice a day the reason why i don't brush my teeth twice a day is because of when i brush in the night i find it hard i find it hard to go to bed because when i brush my eyes i just become more awake so that's why sometimes once wake up early in the morning the first thing i do is to brush because once i brush i become more alert so i really don't brush in the night but there's one thing i started doing always brush your teeth when you wake up so let, let's say you sleep in the afternoon make sure the first thing you do when you wake up is to brush your teeth a lot of times people take height into consideration and you'll find youtube where they'll say do this to grow taller or do this become slimmer yeah people always push the propaganda that slim is pretty i'm not against the propaganda because i believe whether you are thin or you are fat you are pretty you are beautiful as long as you believe it and you know it for a fact but what i want you to understand is your bmi your body mass index please make sure you find out your body mass index now it can be toxic to find out your body mass index because you'll be wondering like how could i lose this amount of weight just to fit this body mass index this is very important remember i'm not making this video just because of toxic beauty cultures i'm making this video because of your health and your confidence so make sure you check out your bmi because you don't want to be obese and not know that you're obese when i'm saying obese i don't mean obese as just being fat i mean obese as being unhealthy to yourself so you need to be healthy bmi can be very toxic so i personally i just have a weight range to my height i'm like 4 11 with my height 4 11 my body weight right now is 46 kg so 45.9 46 kg approximately my weight range if i add weights if i add a lot of weights the highest i've gotten is 54 kg and if i if i lose drastic weight the lowest i've gotten is 42 kg so that is my weight range i don't want to go lower than 42 and i don't want to go higher than 54 that's my weight range because if i go higher than 54 it means i'm already getting so fat if i go lower than 42 it means i am getting too thin so just have a weight range that you want to work with you are still growing a lot of stretches stretches help with your body if you want to grow taller but i don't believe that you can control your height just focus on your, what you can control i'm from south south so we wear a lot of jewelry like beads but my mom is not a fan of jewelry so for me i have to like discover jewelry by myself so when it comes to jewelry one first accessory that I feel like is timeless and always looks good on anybody is a wristwatch. That's how I got a wristwatch. That's how I got a wristwatch. And I got it in black. So it could be... My sister loves um this chained gold, like chained wristwatches. I'm not a big fan of chained wristwatches because my arm is so small. And I prefer leather. Yeah leather or rubber i prefer leather or rubber so whatever works for you go with it then apart from your wristwatches earrings or earrings never go timeless and one tip i have for you when it comes to picking out jewelry whether necklaces bracelets anklets whatever jewelry you're picking one tip i have for you is to always go for pearls and silver always go for pearls and silver now the reason why is if you buy gold, you want to buy original gold. And here, I'm an economics. I'm an economist. I'm an economics. I'm an economist. So I always cut my coats according to my size. So go for go for pearls. Like look at Coco. Look at Coco Chanel. Look at her. Coco Chanel. She was emphasizing on how pearls always bring out your beauty like she i think she even said mix your teeth whiter i don't know what she said now let's talk about styling because this is very important to me i did a lot of research and i'm still working on my research first thing is to know your height when you're styling any outfits very very important so for me i am small in stature and because of that you have to, the first thing you have to learn whether you're small or you're tall is to flatter your features so it could be your collarbones for example i have very good collarbones you should them. I've added good weight, so you can see that my collarbones are. I've added good weight, you can see that my collarbones are never as obvious as before, but they are still flattering. Anyway, can you see that? 
So flatter your good features, like your back. It could be your back. It could be your arm. It could be your arm. It could be your neck or your collarbones. Whatever good features. It could be your stomach if you have a flat stomach. It could be your butt if you have a good standing butt or hips. If you have the opposite, if you don't have good, if you don't have a good um collar or neck bone, you could cover it up by choosing a turtle neck to enhance your neck. You could um for me when I was younger I hated wearing sleeveless dresses because of I felt my arms were masculine, but now I love sleeveless dresses. Honestly, I, my confidence has grown to the top. Like I love sleeveless. So if you are insecure about your arms, my mom, my mom, oh my mom. <laughs> if you are insecure about your arms, you could wear long sleeves and flatter your wrist instead. If you are and flatter your wrist instead. If you are insecure about your stomach, you could wear peplum tops or peplum blouses to cover it up and enhance your waist. If you are insecure about your butt, you could wear six or three pieces or four pieces because it's like using the dimension of those six pieces. I had no idea this video is going to be so stressful to film. It's going to two days now. <sighs> For short people, you want to wear a lot of vertical stripes, even if you are tall. Wearing vertical stripes help enhance your length. Then if you are flat chested or if you don't really have hips, you can wear horizontal stripes in that area to emphasize length. Now let's talk about shoes. They say good shoes take you to good places. I don't really have so much shoes. Shoes are very expensive. There are five essential shoes you should have. It's heels, slides or slippers, flats or kitten heels, sandals, and sneakers preferably get white or black sneakers so i can pair it up with anything with time you could switch and add up more to your sneakers preferably have two to three heels in three neutral colors from brown black and peach or silver and you can try switching up your two different type of heels like stilettos sandals and for short people the thing that is trending is pumps pumps are trending platform shoes are trending whether it's even heels or if it's your flats, having platform shoes are trending and they are actually cool to like enhance your height. I have a lot of flats and I'm small, but flats are very comfortable. So those are the basic type of shoes you should have. I don't want to think of buying plenty of shoes. If you have one of each, one heels, one pair of heels, one pair of sandals, one pair of sneakers, one pair of slippers, lights, just have those different pairs of shoes so you can wear them to different occasions and also try to keep them in good shape as possible this week is my birthday and I'm going to be turning 23 that's why i'm giving out 23 glow up tips so another tip i have for you is when you scroll on pinterest have a mood board this mood board should be outfit inspiration now this outfit inspiration should not be something that you don't have at home it should be essentials of what you have at home that you can recreate and there are some things you have to take into consideration like the person's skin tone, if the person's body weight and height is similar to yours, and the person's taste, if it's similar to your pocket. So save those inspirations. So when you run out of what to wear, you can just check in the mood board and get inspired on how to style your clothes. Now, this part is very important, and I feel it's far more important than everything I've mentioned so far in this video, because if you don't have this you will not be liked or found attractive by anybody. Even those who find you attractive might at the end find you unattractive because you don't have this. This is how to mentally glow up. Now, not everybody has a pretty voice. Like, there are some people's voices, when they talk, you just want them to keep talking. And there are some people that will talk and you're like, wow, wow, God is amazing. So, not everybody has a so-called pretty voice, but... I have hacks that I want you guys to take note of. And the first thing is your voice tone. When you're talking to people, you don't want to shout. I'm very guilty of this. Sometimes I'm just shouting and I don't need to shout actually. And the reason why I'm guilty of this is because when I was small, I always felt timid. Like people could not hear me. So sometimes I end up shouting when I don't need to shout. So my advice for you is to talk gently. I'm learning to talk as slow as possible. It's not, it's not easy, but... Talk gently. When you notice that you are off track or you are, your voice, you are shouting or 
you are talking so fast you can calm yourself down and continue talking also try to calculate what you want to say before you say it so calculate it in your head before you actually say it out another thing is to make sure that you try to use your emotions there are other parts of your body you can use to talk without even speaking for example your eyes remember i told you i love my eyes your eyes you can use your eyes to talk without actually talking so it could be surprise it could be annoyed or disgusted it could be sad whatever emotion you want to convey or reaction you can also talk with your eyes and also talk with your hands if you learn sign language that's cool but you can also talk with your hands using reactions also don't be ashamed of your accent if you have an accent and you're speaking another language you should not be ashamed of it instead what you should just try to do is to try to learn the accent of the other language so you can try to work on speaking in that accent for that language and also speaking your own language in your own accent don't be ashamed of your accent learning a lot of languages is also very attractive if you can't please try to learn another language and if you can't just speak a little things in another language is actually very attractive just keep on working on your diction and your grammar when you are speaking i've said a lot of blunders in this video when i was editing i was like why did i say this but don't be ashamed of your mistakes. There is a thin line between being confident and being proud. So remember, don't feed your pride or your ego. You want to appreciate yourself. That is what confidence is. Confidence is appreciating who you are. Confidence is appreciating and assuring yourself who you are. Remember to tell yourself who you are. Remember to tell yourself affirmations of who you are so you don't be brainwashed by what people tell you that they think you are. Remember, you can't change people. But you can work on yourself glowing up should not be to please anybody don't glow up because of you want your boyfriend to like you or you want to impress anybody you are glowing up because of you are appreciating yourself that is what self-confidence is another tip you should try before summer is to get an excellent skill you ever notice that all these tech bros they just look attractive even when some people call them or consider them average they just look attractive just because of their tech bros you know why it's because of they have a skill that people don't always find the courage to learn so find a skill and learn it even if it's as simple as playing a piano which i don't think is actually simple learn playing, playing something learn an instrument learn a new language learn something it's not just only going to pay off in your attractiveness it's also going to pay off especially if it is a payable skill from sports to arts to politics to everyday life, there is always something you can learn. Another tip to glow up is to be slow to anger. I watched a video on YouTube where this girl was talking about how you should be kind, not nice. People can always take advantage of how good or attractive or how nice we are. But you should always have boundaries and priorities like I said in this video. Always set your boundaries, always set your principles so you don't get redone. Learn to not take vengeance into your hands. Just because of somebody treats you bad doesn't mean you should treat them bad. You are far more mature than the other person. Don't allow the person's character rub off on you. You are different because of you know who you are. You are not garbage. Your heart is not filthy. So instead, have compassion on the other person and treat them better. And I want to give a big shout out to Somi Sola for being the first person to comment on my last video. Thank you guys for the engagement on my last video. Please make sure that you comment slow up if you made this part. Because of you are still here, like I said in my last video, understand that you cannot change what people think about you. But you can always change what you think about yourself. Think of yourself as a main character. There was a short video I posted on this channel a while back where I said, Everybody is a sub-character in my life i am the protagonist of my life i don't know because of, i watch movies like extraordinary you two world and those movies we align my mindset what i learned from those movies is that i am a sub character in your life i'm the main character in my life focus on yourself when you focus on loving yourself you'll be able to love other people because if you don't love yourself how can you share that same love to other people and do you know what's so beautiful the greatest love is jesus the greatest love is god the more you find yourself in God, the more you'll be able to love other people. The more you become more attractive because Jesus is the most attractive being. Yeah. Notice all the things I've said in this video. When you think of yourself as a main character, think of how you manage your time. You think of how you want to look good today because you are the main character. And you know that your sub-characters lean on you for aspiration. Because of you are the main character. You think of how you want to get better at your skill. You are the hero. You are the protagonist. You have to win. 
for yourself and for others i really hope you like this video physically and i really hope it was very inspirational a live stream study with me on sundays so that we can read together i'm thinking of that because i have a lot to read if you guys are interested in that please let me know also 3 a.m monday morning make sure you subscribe if you haven't make sure you like the video physically make sure you share the video to anybody who wants to glow up before summer i can't wait to see you guys results by august august is in three months mm. i'm walking behind the scenes for my bullet journal i'll be 23 next week so i'll see you when i'm 23 bye